Next to those mounting tensions between Russia and the U.S., tonight the Kremlin announcing the test launch of a new intercontinental ballistic missile called by critics Satan II. Are they risking a new arms race? ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz joins us now from Washington. And Martha, that new missile test comes as two Russian planes are standing by ready to take off with expelled diplomats back to Moscow. Uh, that's right, Tom. Those two Russian government planes landed at Washington's Dulles Airport, a U-Haul being unloaded next to it, just waiting for those 60 diplomats to get on board and get out of the country, all in response to the nerve agent attack on the former Russian spy and his daughter in Britain and in Moscow retaliation. It is 60 Americans being sent home. This is Russia released video of the test launch of a powerful new generation of nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. But ABC News has confirmed that President Trump warned Vladimir Putin earlier this month in a phone call, if you want to have an arms race, we can do that, but I'll win. Let's bring in retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, a solitary senior fellow and military expert at Defense Priorities. Uh, Colonel, let's start here. I want to ask you, would President Putin dare push the nuclear button? And if you think he wouldn't, then what's his end game? No, he absolutely would not, because he knows that if the second that he ever does that, that's the destruction of Moscow and the end of his regime. What he is doing is trying to show his strength. What he, what he wants to do is to project a, an image of power. He wants to make people throughout the world believe that it's an equal balance between the United States and Russia. And he wants to show, okay, the United States has their new nuclear weapons that they talked about back in October and then again in February, and now here's mine, so I'm just as equal with them. The fact is, he's not. Uh, uh, now, they have nuclear weapons, and we have to respect that because they do have the ability, as Secretary Mattis conceded at the time, that, you know, they could do severe damage to the United States. If Russia aimed a long-range missile like the Satan II it just tested, or North Korea suddenly targeted the headquarters for the U.S. nuclear arsenal, top commanders would only have minutes to get to safety. If deterrence fails, we will deliver a decisive response. That's what we do. We have to make sure that we as the United States have the capability and we show the capability to our potential adversaries. A senior officer at U.S. Strategic Command with authority to launch a counterattack if ordered would need to be able to escape a direct hit on the base and stay alive to advise the president. It's a nightmare scenario that is regularly practiced by the top commander, four-star general John Hyten. That clock tells me you can always find the president of the United States. Always know where the president is. In fact, the top screen on the left will actually list the location of the president, the vice president, secretary of defense, secretary of state, attorney general, everybody that uh, we would need. Then there is the countdown clock. Safe escape time, the amount of time to get to the escape aircraft via a secret tunnel. You got that door and there's actually a, a, a a stairwell that goes up to the grass that comes outside the building. My security detail will all have a car pre-positioned. I'll run and jump in the car. Uh, the, the roads will open up on this base and I'll go beeline straight for the runway. We'll jump right on the runway. I come out, I come right under the airplane. On board the E-6B Airborne Command Post, Brigadier General Gregory Bowen shows us around. We have a very small amount of time from when we get missile warning coming in so we have to have this jet off the ground and out of this area so it survives. You could, if it came to it, talk to President Trump it, from this plane. Yes, if, if it was the worst day in America's history and this was the only thing left, yes. From this panel, intercontinental ballistic missiles could be launched from their underground silos. The key's going here. And it's, it's everything in the nuclear world is two-person control. So there's two people that have to turn the keys. The other one would be sitting behind you. Uh, and then I've got a switch here to actually enable the system. And from here, using a classified antenna flying out the back of the plane, submarines hiding deep under the ocean surface could also get direct orders to launch their missiles. We can communicate with our subs 24-7, no matter where they are in the world. With the nuclear arsenals of North Korea and Russia now a top worry, this is the center of military efforts to stay out of war. We have to make sure that we as the United States have the capability and we show the capability to our potential adversaries that 
should they decide they want to strike us, the cost of doing that is going to be unbearable on their country. And that's part of what this jet does. It, it, it is deterrence uh, in its simplest form. If you shoot at us, your country's going to go away. It's that simple. There's a verse in, in the Bible that says, when Jesus returns to earth, will he find faith on earth? And, you know, if we lose faith in ourselves and in our fellow human beings, then I don't know if we can continue to exist, particularly uh, with the threat of uh, nuclear warfare and the threat of uh, global warming and things of that kind, where human beings for the first time in history have brought about a threat to the existence of all living things on Earth.